Hi, my name is Todd Reimer. I'm with Boots in the Ground Coaching. And as you look around me, you'll notice I'm standing under one bridge with two other bridges just behind me here. I'm standing in the North Saskatchewan River Valley. And there's three bridges. Two of them are almost identical. And one is older. Now the two newer ones, the bigger ones, are still in use. And you can hear the traffic going behind me and on top of me sometimes. The old bridge isn't in use anymore. It hasn't been in use since I was a child because it was too narrow, it was getting too old, and it was in disrepair. All three of these bridges are a little bit different, and the older one is a lot different, but there's something significantly the same about all three. When you look behind me over here, what you'll notice is there's something called a pier. Each of these bridges have piers, and those are the things that hold the deck of the bridge above the river. Now these piers go down into the water and end where the river bottom starts. What happens at that point is something that almost nobody sees and most people don't even recognize as existing. Those are called pilings. If you've done construction, you know we put pilings down for a number of different purposes in a number of different projects. In a bridge like this, the pilings are what actually holds the bridge structure up. The piers are important. They hold it up and, and connect the, the bridge deck to the pilings but the pilings go down deep into the ground. They can be made of concrete, wood, or steel, depending on the bridge and depending on the project. This is the part, though, of the bridge that most people don't even know exists, but it's one of the most important parts. If those aren't solid, if those don't hold fast, the whole bridge will come down. The pilings give stability to the rest of the bridge. And we're holding a workshop and a seminar in Alberta and BC in April and May. And is how do you lead, how do you manage millennials? Often we're looking for a quick fix, uh, some, a few tricks. You know, here's the top five, way, five ways to lead millennials. Here's the top three ways that you can impact millennials and manage them in the workplace. That's not what this is about. This is about the pilings, the things that go deep into our leadership the things that make us solid, the things that make us able to lead not just millennials, but to lead men and women of any generation effectively and successfully. We want to be able to bring out the best in anybody we're leading. We want to help them be productive, successful, produce products that have quality and to be safe. And the things that we're going to focus on are the things below the surface. The tools and the skills that we need as leaders to be effective leaders and managers. So I want to invite you to the workshop that we're having in April and later on in May there'll be a second one. But we're going to be in Alberta and British Columbia and I invite you to take a look at the link and the information on this email and register for these classes. We'll see you there.